Oh, there are people here. Very nice. We'll get started in a moment. I'm just gonna wait for some more people to join because 11 people seem rather low. No hints for break three. Why would you want break two hints? It's been due for like weeks. Oh, Alright, sick. I'm not gonna bother to wait anymore because people are already here. So, let me... Reorganize my screen. That'll do. Alright, 
Um, so what we're going to be doing this hour is we're going to be going over a few stuff. Um, optimally this shouldn't take an hour, but we'll see how I go. Um, the idea is in the 2018 final exam bit, I'll be going through the practice sites as quickly as I can and talking through my thought processes. Um, we'll see what happens, but is it possible to turn off the mic? Let me see. Audio properties. Is this better? Let me see if I can change this. Sound settings. Um, does the mic go any louder? When I put it at two hundred percent, what does it sound like? Check on my own computer, give me a second. Hello? I think it's just you. It sounds okay on my other computer. Maybe just turn up your speakers. Otherwise, I'll try to turn the mic up later. If you have questions, post in Slack chat. Otherwise, post in Twitch chat and I'll be checking both periodically. Fine by me. Sweet. Works for one person, so I don't really care about anybody else. That's how it works, right? That should do it. Alright, good luck, friends. Alright, so first we're going to go through the um, exam outline. If there are any questions, feel free to ask, but it should be straightforward. Don't care about the theory exam. The final prac exam, you have two choices. If you have not elected yet, please elect as soon as possible. Is Twitch just true? I don't really care. I've got both open. You can see both. I'll be watching both the whole time. Um, so, for the final exam, please email in and nominate which one you want to do so you have good numbers and we know how many people to roster on. Um, the reason why they're fixed is because the content we give you in part two is directly from part one. So, obviously, it won't make much sense if we give you the part two for exam A or the part one and the part two for, like you can't see the source code before you do the question because that's kind of cheap. Um, so tell us what day you are and then we'll make sure your accounts and stuff are set up for that day. Otherwise, we will not facilitate anything else. Um, for the break exam, we have explained what the topic will be, but to go over it again, you will have one challenge of recon. So the idea is that You'll have like some scope, whether it will be like DNS recon or directory recon. We haven't specified yet. It might be a combination of both. I'm just prepared to do a little bit of recon. It shouldn't be super difficult. Should be relatively easy. There'll be four challenges to complete over the 12 hours. Uh, optimistically, each one should take about one hour each. We're trying to make them relatively simple. It should be really a four hour exam. We're just giving you like three times as much time to write up your solutions. Um, the reason why we say four hosts will be provided to one to flags, one to two flags each, is the intention is you will have four challenges with five flags, with one challenge potentially having an easy flag and a much more difficult flag to distinguish between those who are good at the course and those who are great at the course. So don't feel discouraged if you don't get all the flags. One of the flags might be a bit more difficult than the other four. Uh, so the intention is about five flags. However. The final exam spec that you will see on the day will tell you exactly how many. These topics will not be assessed. Assume that everything else is assessed. Um, if you're uncomfortable with this content, go back and look at the various tutorials and the various uh, war games. If any of them are down or broken, ping us in Slack chat and we'll try to fix them up. Um, if we've forgotten because we're busy, then just ping us again, we're only human. With your write-up, we will be giving partial marks for um, write-ups, so I'll just type that here to make an announcement, just in case people are unsure. So if you find a flag and you provide a write-up, you're almost guaranteed full marks. Otherwise, the form for the exam slot preferences hasn't been released right. Um, 
not yet. Just at Zane. And otherwise you can just email us and we'll just note you down as whichever day. But by default we'll assume you're taking it on the 15th and 16th. Um, because that's the intended slot. And if you can't make it, we'll put you in the second part, which is on the two Sundays. Uh, so back to the report. Submit the flags you find. If you submit the flag you find and a report, you're almost guaranteed full marks. Otherwise, if you don't find the flag, write as much as you can about the challenge, and then we'll sort of give you partial marks depending on how far you get. Um, should be similar to what you've been doing so far. Submission is the same. Submit a markdown file or a text file or whatever. Uh, this final time submission is 9pm on the 15th of May for part 1 or 9pm on the 5th of May if you're doing in pair B. Um, for those with special considerations, we'll email you separately about your deadline. We don't know how to do it yet. The general idea is probably it's going to be something similar or we figure out something else. But the idea is you will get zero if you have submitted nothing by 9pm. You have 12 hours to write anything at all. So we will mark anything and everything up until that point. And we'll only submit, we'll only mark your f final submission. So unless you like majorly fuck up and submit your whole thing and then submit nothing over the top, then we might go back and look at it. But otherwise, unless there's some extenuating like special circumstance, our memes welcome, yes they are welcome. Um, unless there's some extraneous circumstance, then we will only mark your last one. And standard exam rules apply. If we find you're cheating, then you'll instantly get zero. Um, and both parties will be dealt with for academic misconduct, etc, etc. Um, the general rule is the internet is a read-only resource, so don't post questions on Stack Overflow or ask an IRC. Uh, hello. I, I don't know who these people are or who your handles are, so. So that's the end of part one. If you have any questions, feel free to post in chat, otherwise I'll just keep moving through. Um, the second part, which is patch 2, after the next 12 hours, um, you'll have the patch exam. This is where you give, you're given a minified source of the challenge you just broke, um, or the challenges you're given. So we'll just cut out all the garbage stuff that you don't need to look at, similar to what you've been doing with current patch challenges, and you just have to patch the challenge to remove the vulnerability. Um, that's pretty much it. Same thing as usual. I think that's pretty straightforward. Um, these will be mostly auto-tested. I think they will also be hand-marked if things go really bad. They'll be marked the same as your current patch. So if you have questions about that, ask Zane. Um, for the extended students, if they're tuning in, instead of the patch lecture, you'll be given another, like, another break exam, which is just extended questions. And we've already went through this, so you should know what's happening. We will set up an exam site. I don't know if it's up yet. It is not up yet. Uh, but this will contain the full spec for the exam again, and the links to your targets, etc, etc. Um, if you have any issues, email us. Do not slack us. We'll be given the docker like patch 2, or we'll be super bare bones like patch 1. Um, I'm not entirely sure yet, since Zane is handling that. Zane and Carrie are handling that part. I assume it'll be more like patch 2, to give you guys some ability to test it. Um, but I will at them to see what they respond with. It'd probably be better if I got them on call or something, but such is life. I'll make a note to ask them. Um, Alright. So, if you have any exams, please email us. Do not contact us via Slack. Um, you shouldn't be on Slack. So we will be monitoring the, the email throughout the day. Um, that's the preferred method of contact. Um, any announcements we will put up via web CMS and we'll also put up on the exam site. So have your email inbox open if like notifications come out, which you should get relatively immediately. Or have like the exam site open, which will refresh periodically. Um, supplementary exams. I think there's the uni policy of fit to sit or something, um, yeah, whatever it is, I think special considerations are now all handled centrally, so we don't even have control, 
don't quote me on that, but I think that's the policy. Um, yeah, that's about it. Also, if you start sitting one exam, you'll have to sit the other one unless there's like significant sickness and you have to and you can get supplementary consideration for it. Um, and then standard rules apply. Don't directly brute force the challenges. Don't attack the infrastructure. Don't attack our auth portal. Um, the auth stuff will be explicitly obvious that it's out of scope because it'll say like out of scope cookie or like the same thing as what you've been doing for your war games. Um, violations, etc, etc, etc. Alright, so that's the exam spec. Should be pretty straightforward. Um, I don't think there should be many questions from that. Sweet. Alright, so moving forward, we're going to look at recommended tooling for the exam. Um, so I'm currently on my desktop, which I don't use normally for hacking, so I spent about half an hour setting this up. Shouldn't take you longer than that. Um, the general gist of it is there's really only three to four things you need. Uh, I've set up Burp Suite, which you just install. You should have Burp Suite already set up. Uh, I'll show you a few neat tricks with Burp Suite that you can use. The browser, I currently use uh, Foxy Proxy for my um, proxy switching, so it allows me to pick Burp Suite. Um, and then you can see the content here. And then I also have Edit My Cookie because this is something that's super useful when you're just testing websites. Um, for taking notes, I use Joplin. It's like this magic thing I've found. It allows you to type Markdown. It's kind of like Bear App if you've used it on Mac. Um, but it allows you to like type Markdown and give you a preview, and then you can print to a PDF if you want, um, which is kind of neat. It also lets you paste images. Uh, so if, for example, you want to take a screenshot, then you can just paste the image in and you'll see the image, which is also kind of useful if you want to do like pox and stuff. That's pretty much the only setup you need for the final exam. I don't anticipate you'll need anything else. Uh, most of the challenges should be completable with just that because Burp Suite has all your decoder and encoder stuff. Um, so that being said, some useful things for Burp Suite that you can do is you can turn on advanced scope control, um, whitelist everything, and then exclude google.com static.com uh, facebook.com and anything else that's like really annoying and what I mean by annoying is for example if I don't disable these and you have a look at here and I start typing assuming I had a uh, oh, wrong browser so when I start typing, did I disable it? I might have. Advanced. I'm quite sure if I start typing, it should start populating with garbage. But it doesn't seem to be happening. Yeah, I guess instant search isn't enabled, um, which is good. But if instant search is enabled, which I think is with one of these features, You know what, fuck it. I give up. Um, but if instant search is enabled, then Google will be a pain, which is why you can add targets to disable stuff, uh, which is what I mainly do for testing stuff. The other thing you can do is you can add your scope to specifically just your exam domains, which may or may not be helpful depending on what the exam domains do, but usually it's fine. Um, other things that are useful with BUP is some extensions are super useful. So I just installed this. One of the, my most commonly used ones is Flow. That allows you to log your repeater requests. Um, then you have Decoder Improved. Uh, what else do I use commonly? That's the Pro.
I think that's the main two that I use. JSON decoder. Oh, JSON beautifier. Easier. Don't need the whole thing. Uh, and I think that's all you ought to have for the base course. Because there's not much else you really need. Uh, which should be okay. But the main value is having flow. Because, for example, if you start repeating requests. Um, and you want to have this logged. Flow will have your repeater request logged there. Uh, which is super useful if you do use repeater a lot. Which I do strongly recommend. Anyway, if there are any other questions about tooling, feel free to ask. Oh yeah, and music. Is no SQL map and map allowed? You won't need to use nmap. I don't think you'll need to use SQL map. The challenges should be able to be done by hand. Um, I, if you haven't had to use SQL map in your war games yet, which I don't remember whether I've set a SQL challenge for the base course, I don't think I have, then you shouldn't need to use SQL map in the exam. Um, like, you shouldn't need to use automated tools. Everything should be pretty straightforward. For music recommendations, uh, there's a few playlists. High BPM is useful if you want to work quickly. And then there is also hi-fi music if you want to listen to electronic. Alright, that being said, let's go through some challenges for the next 40 minutes and see how I go. And I'll be trying to speak through my thought processes while looking at it, uh, which might help. Uh, so first one on the list is Gibson. I don't remember what this was. This might be an XSS challenge, who knows. Uh, or it might be a SQL. I, I have a login page. There's a reset password function. But I don't know. Well, let's just have a look. Invalid username. Alright, that doesn't do anything. Having a look at the page, there's not much on it. There's a CSR of token, but I assume that's just default on the form. Uh, looking at other garbage that might be worth checking, robots.txt has a slash admin page, uh, which instantly redirects us by the 302, which probably means that it's not it. So if we just go back here and we just try logging in and stuff. Uh, so that gave us no response. I'm confused. Invalid username. Hmm, interesting. Can we see your Christian music category? I don't have a Christian music category. Religion? I don't think that's religion. I think that's just a soundtrack. Fuck. Um, hmm. Let me see. Maybe... Invalid username. So there's not much you can do on this app. Maybe there's something else I'm missing. There's reset. There's login. And there's an admin page. And the admin page... 302's us. So, hmm. Interesting. That is like a CSR of token. If that's okay, I'll try to work on my go for it. Uh, link us your playlist. Uh, copy playlist link. Role is user. I didn't see that before. It probably would have been helpful to see it. Maybe I just have admin. We have invalid password. That's more promising. What happens if I add a quote to here? 
Uh, we still have invalid password. Invalid password, maybe it's password. Still invalid password. Invalid username. So clearly the username is admin. Maybe it's SQL injection? Nope, doesn't look like it. If I exclude the role, I guess that just defaults to something. Maybe it's double quotes. Maybe it's back tick. Maybe if I remove the field. Guest username exists, that sounds helpful. Valid password. Maybe reset password for guests? Aha! Wow, that's interesting. So, this just gives us a fake email inbox. Would have been useful to try that earlier. Um, so, I assume I try admin or something. This princess is another castle. Nice try. Sweet. Well, that gives us an indication of what's happening. So here's a whole bunch of reset tokens by the looks of it. Uh, if I just click on the reset token, then I can set a password, so I just set it to guest. So I get logged in as guest. Um, I guess what's interesting here is the reset token. I'm not sure if I can use this again. Maybe I can. That's me. So if I set the password to guess 2, it seems like I can get it. Um, what else is here? Alright, so what I notice here is in the guest request, I'm submitting my username as well. SQL injector submit token. Um, this token or the submit field? So typically the submit field is not that useful since that's just the value of the button. Um, so that won't actually get you much. But it looks like, I think... If I intercept the next request and I set the password to guest, and maybe I change the username to admin. It says reset successful, so I have a look at admin and guest, invalid password. I assume that's because now I'm trying to log it as a user. So if I try that again. Still invalid password. Hmm, that is annoying. I was thinking that would be my ticket in, but I guess not. I'm pretty sure that's base 64. Maybe it's gzip to base 64. Um, Alright, let me see. What if it's SQL injection here? Follow redirection. Uh, repeat all process cookies and redirection. Password reset succeeded. Invalid username. Let me see. Admin. Password is set to guest, and then we can reset the guest password. Are these all the same is my query? Could be silly, I think you can play around the reset link, that might be true. Maybe this is injectable?
Ah, I'm blind. Could have done that. Did that be sequel injection? Nope. That looks like an invalid request. So maybe if I try this. Alright, so it seems like these guest tokens are all the same, maybe that's statically generated. So let's try this again. Invalid token. Hmm. Valid token. Interesting. Interesting. Ah, so this wouldn't be the sequel challenge because it's purely auth. That's stupid of me because I should have checked the questions first. Would have made a lot more sense to look at that first. That's clever. Good idea. So that's a SHA-1 hash, which means that if I just have a look... Do I even have Ubuntu here? Oh, I do. Sweet, it worked. I think that was a pretty good observation that I missed. Um, so I probably should have checked what type of hash this is. That would have been useful to realize earlier. But that means now we can just log in and check the admin. Success. Good work, that's the first flag. So what would have been useful is here I should be taking down And let's just be lazy and say, I finished. Uh, but what's useful to say is explaining your thought processes of what happened. Uh, so we have our request that made it and we have password reset, I guess. Floor where the token predictably generated. Uh, over to guess the username and password from the same defaults. And then change the reset URL and forge the token, which is the shell one. Looking at the report, it's just something like this, which is pretty straightforward, has a request, and then it has our image um, of winning. Sweet. Also, please post your flags in plain text, which will make our lives heaps easier when trying to grep for whether you've solved the challenge or not. Alright, sweet as, let's go to the next challenge. That took me 15 minutes, which was a bit too long if I want to finish within the hour. Alright, Hulk Smash. Looks like a lot of people are trying SQL Injection. Uh, the one thing that happens with these challenges is we're creating a whole bunch of I guess, versions. So really no one knows where your SQL Injection is. Alright, let's have a look. Maybe it's creating a user. Uh, register. New trash. So looking at our proxy, we can have a look at what fields are submitted. 
Um, this is just username and password, pretty standard. This is username and password and confirm. Nothing too surprising. Since this is SQL injection, the things you could try are SQL injection and the login. Um, so I guess I'll take notes for that. I'm looking at this one. Um, so let's just create some garbage um, and add SQL injection everywhere. Um, so we can see that there's not much here, there's our password, there's the hash, um, it looks like it's pretty straightforward that it seems to be just right there. Talking about Flask section cookies, but sometimes when they get too long the cookie begins encoding changes. So what's happening there is it's probably Flask um, gzipping them, so if you want to search it up it'll be... Oh yeah, another pro tip is have different profiles. So one profile is set up for Burp Suite and one set up for like nothing else. Because you don't want your Google searches going through Burp Suite and like filling up with garbage. Plus uh, cookie decode. So there's a really complex script here, but really all it is, um, is I think it's a base64 and gzipped cookie. There's like a really easy script to decode it. Yeah, yeah, here. Um, so all you need to do is like base64 decoded, then zlib decompress. Sorry, not gzip, zlib. Uh, so for example, we throw our cookie into there. It should spit out what the token is, um, which literally is, I think, this bit. So if you just have like your own script locally then this is it. Yeah, that's super useful. One other thing that's super useful that I haven't set up on this computer is if you have something like IPython, uh, which I don't, you can set up a shell that will just have like and set up a bunch of aliases and functions that you import automatically. Um, so you can add your own like module into pip or like your Python imports folder directory, and then just import whatever you want. And then after that, you can just go like Python decode or like Flask decode. I'm getting a lot of Slack pings, but I'll check them later. Um, all right, anyway, enough divergence. So it looks like we have our SQL injection in the query field. Um, so looking at the request, that was this one. Uh, obviously all we want to do is try to inject this, so I'll just do it here for 1 equals 1. Follow redirection? What is it? Invalid trash ID. Are you being naughty? Interesting. If we're looking at it, what we probably want to do is find it where the ID is equal to zero. So for simplicity, I'll just create all the no password because that's probably what I want to do. Uh, and then if that gives us a programming error, two should give us an invalid trash ID because we escaped one. So if we do ah, that's annoying. So what I was trying was, I was trying to comment it out, but what I realized is the hash itself needs to be URL encoded, otherwise it just disappears. Um, so what we can do is if we go here and we say, I'm just trying to comment out everything else. Um, we can see it did in fact work. 
So we got our trash ASDF for 1 equals 1, I think. Uh, copy your art. So we got trash number 46, which is what we were looking for because this one is. Ah, that was my old one. Oops, my bad. Give me something I can use. This one. So this ID ought to be easier. Um, so one thing that I'm just going to think about at first, the, the code web page didn't work for feedback. I had to use that. Yeah, all that. Um, so the one thing I'm trying to do is I'm trying to find something that's easiest to test with. So this says password check failed, probably because I have a password. So I'm just going to ignore that. So now that I know I have a SQL injection um, in this field and it works, and I can see that, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to try booting my other computer because it's getting really noisy, um, and try doing a union injection because select null, null, and see how many columns we're going for. So it looks like that was not it. This redirected us to root and gave us some alert, uh, but I don't know where that alert is in this render. Frogging error, you have a SQL syntax error. Unsurprising. Union all select no. Not sure if this is actually working, so I'll try something else instead. Um, or where one, and I'll make this into some garbage one. Follow redirection. What was my query? Or one equals one space. That ought to work. I don't see why it wouldn't. Oh, I'm missing a space, that's why. So password check failed. Um, that must mean that the password itself was incorrect. I s from what I recall about this um, exam, we set all the IDs to be in the correct, like in a defined spot. So all of these IDs would be at exactly 9447 if it were the flag if I believe. So I'd be saying all one equals one um, and ID equals 9447. All right, that didn't work. Maybe I need quotes around ID. I guess my best bet might be trying to do a union injection or some sort of union injection then and try to get it to work properly this time. Um, union select all. Maybe it's because I'm selecting too many rows. Union or select one. Near all plus plus one. Ah, so it seems to be filtering out the word select, which is 
What I was under uh, not understanding. Would you need to be familiar with how Docker works? Um, you won't need to know or understand how Docker works for the exam. Um, it shouldn't be relevant. For the patch, the only thing you need to know for Docker is how to like turn it on and run it. Because it's supposed to set up the environment for you to make your life easier. Um, you won't need to like understand the inner workings of Docker. So if you just know how to do like Docker run, then you should be fine. Um, so what I just noticed is that my keyword for select was being filtered out because I have all plus gap and then one, um, which is why I'm getting a syntax error. So maybe I'll just try something stupid like this. Um, and the other thing to note is because I'm getting pluses, I want to do like spaces instead um, because clearly the pluses are not doing what I want them to do. We're talking about guests can access a host, would we need to know how to do stuff like that? Uh, no, you won't need to know how to do shell escapes. That's a bit too complex for the exam. There's not enough time to do that. Follow redirection. Alright, so... What's this saying? You have an error SQL syntax. I assume that now it should be working. Uh, so what that means is now I just need to find out how many columns I have. So let's have a look. Select one. Let's just say no, no. Alright, why is this happening? Maybe it's not detecting union. So I think... Anyway, do something like this. What do you say? Use select statements have a different number of columns. So my assumption was correct. I was thinking what was happening was that where I had... Um, where the union wasn't appearing because our messages were previously... This is where flow comes in handy. We have this error in our syntax and we have all select. So I'm missing the union and I don't know like whether it's because the syntax is wrong or because the word was removed and it's because the word's not there. Um, so looking at that, we can now try to figure out how many columns I have. So now we're looking at three, four, five, six, seven. How many going for? Jesus. Eight, nine, ten. There we go. What? Error response. Is that a good or bad thing? I can't tell. Uh, this probably means that there was an error. So let's just put or one equals one. Uh, so we actually have a result. How many is that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 9, 10. I assume that's correct. Password check failed. Uh, so that's more promising. Now I just need to figure out which one of these is the password check. Uh, so, I guess I don't really need that anymore. Union select 1, 2, 3, 4. Hmm. So I guess if I put all of these as empty string, then one of these has to be the pass password check. Alright, that's not what I wanted to do. Uh, let's just figure it out manually then, and replace each one at a time. So that wasn't it. Editing 2 doesn't seem to affect it. Editing 3 doesn't seem to affect it. Editing 4 doesn't seem to work. 5? 6? 7? Alright, so it seems to be 7 is our password. Uh, so now if we just say, look at the HTML, what are we looking at? Uh, we're looking at five, which might mean that's our ID field, or this is the text field that we're looking at. Uh, meaning, so if this is say our trash field, we can see that's our trash field, and now we can do say our sub query injection here. Um, I think what might be easier is actually saying select, I don't know which one is the ID. But I guess that's not super important. We can just say select um, 
either could figure out the columns or we could look at something like this and say select title from I don't know what table name this might be maybe it's from trash where ID equals one how did I screw up my syntax now you have an error that's right I forgot about the select filter. And I'll say. It might be the pluses actually. And so they're showing up. Unknown column ID in where clause. Well, that's a good sign. Today I learned about Burp's repeater. Yeah, repeat is pretty good. I don't call them ID in where clause. So I guess what we could do now is we do some cheating and we have a look at how to MySQL group by dump. Um, what was it? MySQL group contact. my life easy give me the one liner I need All right. and let's put you yeah. no, that's not what I wanted to do all right since this is being annoying what I'll do is Place all my spaces. Um, make some of these lowercase, and then put you back into the query. What now? Near columns. Why is it complaining about columns? Well, table schema group by table name 116. Actually, it might just be select flag from flag. Did that work? Oh, it's because I need to bloody do this. This is so annoying. Holy moly. Unknown column flag and field list. Oh, I guess that's not what I wanted. Why is that giving me a syntax error? It ought not to be. Select SDF. Yeah. So, why is this not working? Why is it an extra quote oh, at the end of the bracket? Potentially is blocking the word flag. I'm going to call them flag and field list. So what you can do then, I, I don't know if Zane actually gave us the hardest one or some shit. I feel like I'm getting trolled. Um, decode improved. So we can encode as URL. Select star from flag limit one. Is that my solution? 
potentially. No tables used. I'm not sure what that error means since I've never seen it before. First time for me as well. No idea. So I guess limit is a blacklisted keyword, which is quite annoying. Mm, how about flag select? That's a good idea. I don't know why that's happening. Hmm. Potentially because this table doesn't exist. Um, or what I could just do is select flag from flag. Ah, so it is removing the word flag. That's quite annoying. Which is why it wasn't coming up. So it is recursively removing things, uh, which makes my life difficult. So what you can do with MySQL is you can get the hex encoding of the text and just use it as a string. So if I say just flag, my numbers are that, and if I go repeater, I think this should work. Oh, that was painful. What? That's not what I wanted. Unknown column flag and field list. Oh, we're getting trolled so hard. All right. Uh, since the hour's nearly off and I have to go eat dinner, I think that's the extent of what I'll do in this hour. But I think that you get the general idea is now we're just stuck against the filter. Um, at this point, the only thing we're missing is really getting the flag because we know what to do. Information schema tables. Yeah, I probably could go through digging through it uh, if I really wanted to. Like, it's not super difficult. If you want, you could even use like this query to make your life easy uh, because this will group them all into one. I reckon Zane probably... I don't know. I, I don't remember which variant this was because we wrote about five variants for this challenge and each one had different filters in place. And it seems like this one probably had all of them turned on, uh, which is slightly annoying, but we're pretty much there. I think the other thing is it might actually just be a post that we're looking for. Um, but yeah, that being said, that's the extent of this challenge. I'll quickly have a look at the other one in the next five minutes. Uh, maybe I door face good and server side. So if we sign up to this one, let's just not. All right, so we can see if we look through this challenge, uh, are we getting requests for this? No, nope, because I'm in the wrong browser. Are we gonna get solution write-ups or anything for this? Um, for the prac exam, we can probably get an extended one. 
Will we get walkthroughs for extended tutorial exercises like there are for the base course ones? Um. I'm not sure yet. I haven't have any I haven't got any prepared. Otherwise ask your colleagues and if they don't have it then I'll give you one. Otherwise try to help each other help each other out. Yeah, let's go with that. Alright, let's just look at this before I'm too hungry to keep working. Alright. Love about safe spaces, there's some JavaScript here. Doesn't seem to do anything. About safe spaces. Looks like we have a page HTML. This might be a LFI I'm thinking. So we have a look at safe articles and we go dot slash articles that input um, four or four page not found. Check out some other articles. Frack, so you have docs as well. You have pages. So that didn't work. Bad input. Hmm. Let's have a look at robots.txt. So we have API ping. Maybe it's actually cups. V is empty. Uh, looks like it gives us a ping output. Uh, this is giving us no output. Maybe it's a double quote. So I'm thinking this is code injection. Um, I don't exactly know what I'm looking for. Maybe a quote will escape it. Maybe two quotes escape it. Ah, so two quotes seems to escape it sufficiently. So that means this one's matching this one. So I can probably do something like something like this maybe. No, it doesn't give me an error. So I need to URL encode these. Control U. There we go. Uh, so LS work, and then we can do just cat flag. Probably. There we go. Hilarious. Alright, um, and let's have a look at our door, and then after this I'll probably end the stream and answer questions. Alright, so I already signed up with a user. So we have users here. Um, I don't know if this is it, because there's a lot of fields I could be injecting to. Uh, so it seems like that's not it because we were redirected to login. Uh, update it. Submit. Post modify 1337. Your inbox messages. Let's have a look. Alright. Let's send him a message. Uh, so this looks like it's just base 64. Um, that's a base 64 UUID, not super interesting. Uh, so we're sending to a mailbox and our message is that. Uh, looks like we're getting a message back. So where would I be looking? Hmm. Made above, profile, update. So I'm thinking maybe if I modify this, I'll be able to follow. It's 
seems like that didn't work. Uh, mainly because even though we modified 9447, um, it looks like ours didn't change. Or if I do want something like this. Um, and then I intercept it. Oh, that's not what I want to do. So getting a user with a different ID doesn't work. This gives us a blank page, which appears to be quite unhelpful. This was the idol challenge. So this is our mailbox. Maybe we can view their mailbox. Um, so Encoda is basically four. Repeater. Permission denied. That's not helpful. What was the solution to ping? Oh, um, you simply did something along the lines of this. Uh, or cat flag. Oh, I think it's semicolon cat flag. There we go. Yeah, so we'll try to make it kind of obvious what type of vine you're looking for. Um, I think this one, since the challenge is explicitly IDOR, then we're probably telling you to IDOR. Um, I don't know if we'll tell you exactly what challenge it is, we'll try to make it relatively obvious, as in we won't make all of them look at messages. But yes, I agree that looking at these probably makes you think of stealing cookies. I'm amazed that 21 people have stayed on for an hour, thanks for staying so long. Alright, I'm gonna call it a night because I'm starving, and I think my food's burning. But, if you have any questions, feel free to post in Slack, I'll answer them. Hopefully this one hour was helpful looking through thought processes and what was happening, and digging through a failed SQL I because there's too many filters in place. Alright, thanks for watching. If you have any, it was kind of useful. Yes, yeah, sweet. Alright, good luck, have fun friends, we'll see you in the exam. Doesn't use a dark theme for Twitch. Yeah, I don't, I don't use Twitch. <laughs>